Okay, so this is a video that is going to go over all of the answers to your homework from last night, lesson 1.1. Now, I'm hoping that you already submitted last night's homework. Um, today, your homework is gonna be on a piece of paper. We'll talk about that later. But we're gonna start with just lesson 1.1, um, points, lines, and planes. All right, so here we go. The first part, number one, asks us to name a line that contains points T and P. So I, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So I am just going to show you where points T and P lie. So this right here is the line that contains points T and P. So when I think about the name for that, I could call it line G, or I could call it line PT with a bar with arrows on the end of it, or line TS, but I could call so also call it line PS. That's not an S, that's an N, I'm sorry. Probably should go throw my glasses on. That's an N. So line PT, line TN, or line PN. Okay? Number two, name a line that intersects the plane containing points Q, N, and P. So the plane What's the name of the line that intersects the plane? So the plane that contains those is plane S. And the only line that intersects plane S is line J. You see that that goes directly through the plane. It's going through the plane. Imagine taking a flat piece of like notebook paper and stabbing a pencil through it. So that would be coming that like pencil. But we could also name that line by the two points, which would be line M, T. All right, next, number three. Name a plane that contains line T, N, and line Q, R. So line T, N, this line right here I'm gonna make that black this is line TN which is the whole line and this is line QR so a sample answer could be you could say plane S remember if we're gonna use one letter it's got to be the cursive capital so there's plane S but you can also name a plane with three points so we could also call it plane um, QRP QRP or you could call it plain TNR there are several plain TNR so there is more than one answer for that okay all right number four Draw and label a figure for each relationship. So for number four, I am going to draw two lines, lines AK and CG, in such a way that they intersect at point M in plane T. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is draw the plane. Whenever I draw a plane, I actually just draw a parallelogram, okay? So we're gonna call this line a, K, and I'm gonna call this line right here, line C, G, and I know that those two lines intersect at point M, and this is plane T. I just need to throw some arrows on the end of my line. So that is totally acceptable. That's a great picture. Number five. A line contains point negative four, 
negative 4. Oops. This is point L. And point M, the ordered pair 2, 3. Line Q is in the same coordinate plane, but does not intersect Q, or sorry, does not intersect line LM, and line Q contains point M. So here is um, an example of line Q and point M. Here is another example. of line Q and point N. What are you discovering? What are we deciding? If they lie in the same plane but they don't intersect, that means that it has to be parallel. Lies in the same plane but does not intersect. That was one of your definitions, I believe. All right, how many planes are shown in the figure? So we're looking at this figure off to the side. So I have this bottom, which is this plane right here, but notice that my figure is also part of that plane, the bottom of this. So that is one plane. And then I have this side right here, which is two. The back, which is three. This side right here, which is four. But I also have the front, five, and I have the top, six. So how many planes are in this figure? Six. Name three collinear points. Well, collinear are three points that lie on the same line. So collinear points, how about, is it collinear or coplanar? Um, how about points S, X, and M? Uh, S, X and M. Are points N, R, S, and W coplanar? N, right, let me erase some of this so you guys can see what's going on. N, R, S, and W. So, N, R, S, and W. Are they coplanar? Well, no, because points S, R, and N lie on plane A, but point W does not lie on plane A, so they are not coplanar. Because point W is not on, oops, is not on plane A. Alrighty, number nine. So number nine, 10 and 11, you're just looking at these and trying to decide what they look like for you. Number nine looks like a plane and a line. Um, number 10, the tip of the pen, oh, that's a point. Number 11, uh, the strings, those are line segments, or parallel line segments even. But we'll just say line segments. Um, a library card would be a plane, and a car antenna would be a line might have a point on the end of it depending on what your antenna looks like okay all right let's keep going we're doing great so now we're going to do some word problems number one the map shows some of the roads in downtown little rock lines are used to represent streets and points are used to represent intersections Four of the street intersections are labeled. What street corresponds to line AB? Well, line AB is right here. 
So that would be Street West 20th Street. Number two, Marsha plans to fly herself from Gainesville to Miami. She wants to model her flight path using a straight line connecting the two cities on the map. So she's gonna go from um, Gainesville to Miami. Sketch her flight on the map shown below. So I just connected the two points with a line, so I created a line segment. It doesn't ask you what you made, but that's what I made. I made a line segment. Um, Nathan's mother wants him to go to the post office and the supermarket. She tells him that the post office, the supermarket, and their home are collinear. Make a map showing the three locations based on this information. Let's see. The post office is between the supermarket and their home. So, supermarket, home, post, post office, So that could be your model. That would be perfect, okay? All right, number four, architecture. An architecture models the floor, walls, and ceiling of a building um, with planes. To locate one of the planes that will represent the wall, the architect starts by making two points that represent the floor. So here are my two points that represent the floor. And I'm gonna draw a line segment between those two points because two points determine a line. Now, if I want to put another point so someone knows that it's a wall, I'm gonna do that. So I've made a third point where the wall and the ceiling meet. Remember that three points that are non-collinear make a plane. All right, number five. Mr. Riley gave his students some rods to represent lines and some clay to show points of intersections. Below is the figure that Lynn constructed with all of the points of intersection and some of the lines labeled. What is the intersection of lines K and N? Well, line K is right here and line in is right here. Two lines intersect at a point, so the intersection is point D. And if you just wrote capital D, that's totally fine because we know that a capital letter all by itself represents a point. Um, name the lines that intersect at point C. Well, here's point C. So the two lines that intersect at point C are lines P and M. You could have also, I need to erase that so I can see all the letters on there. You could have also called those lines, um, could have said or line BC and um, CG. Okay. Um, are there three points that are collinear and coplanar? If so, name them. So let's see. If there are three points that are collinear, that means that there are three points in a line somewhere on this diagram. Um, this line only contains two points. This line only contains two. Contains two. Contains two. Contains two. No. So the answer is no. So that is your homework. So check out your homework. Let me know how you did.